Well, hey crafty friends, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming and oh my goodness, I have the most fun craft for you. We're going to make pink and white popcorn chenille Christmas trees. We're going to stuff them and we're going to put them on one of these wood slices that we're going to paint pink. So, I don't know if you're into pink for Christmas, but all of these ideas can be replicated in your preference of colors. So if you like traditional colors, you can do that. You can use absolutely any kind of fabric that uh, you like. Um, and it's really fun. So let me set these over here and show you what our ingredients are for this recipe. We're gonna be using this pink and this white popcorn chenille. These are bedspreads, you guys. This one I found at an antique store in Bend, Oregon over the summer. It was around probably $20. Um, this is the first time I've used it and it was hard to cut the first piece. Uh, but it has stained, so it's not usable as a bedspread. So that's one thing. We're also going to use this white chenille bedspread that I found um, last spring at Goodwill, and I've been crafting with it. Um, you can find chenille bedspreads or pieces of them uh, at your local thrift stores, antique stores. Look online, check Etsy. I know there's some dealers that sell pieces like that. Okay, and then we're gonna use wood slices. Um, I'm gonna use this color pink because it goes with my whole theme of pink. This is Waverly paint that got green spilt on it in ballet slipper. We're gonna use some dowels, whatever you can get your hands on. You can, you can use twigs if you want. You can even use um, shish kebab spears, whatever. And then I'm gonna use a variety of different little wood pieces, wood wheels and stuff like that. So I'm gonna do the bottom of the trees. I'm gonna use some of these stars. This is a Dollar Tree Plus item. Maybe a little ribbon. Um, and that, oh, and hot glue. And I'm using today the glue gun that I use all the time. It's a Sure Bonder Cool Shot. And I really need to wipe that off. Holy moly, it has a lot of glue strings on it. Okay, so let's start with the wood slice. I have seen these everywhere. Well, not everywhere. I've seen these a lot of places, including Walmart and Hobby Lobby. Um, mine are roughly six by six ish. Okay. And I am going to paint the second one. I'm going to just show you how to do that. Uh, just grab a paintbrush. This probably could have another coat, but it's fine without it. So decide which side you want to paint. I'm going to paint the crummy side because the other side doesn't look too bad. And I'm going to go all the way up to where the wood is, the dark outside, uh, like the bark. Oops, I've already messed it up. Rats. Okay, let me get a wipe and I can fix that. No problem. So how is everyone doing today? I hope you're doing great. I am excited for this craft project and I'm excited to be back in my home, well in the town where we live in Georgia after a little break and to be back crafting with you. Okay, nothing too serious. I do have some, I bet you those are just little bits of hot glue from the surface here that I'm working on. So, I probably won't paint this whole entire thing. I just wanted to give you the basic idea that I'm gonna go clear up to where uh, this um, wood bark 
is. Okay, somebody's asking me, where did I get my shirt? I got this shirt at my favorite store, my favorite clothing store, um, The Loft, and I think I got it either last winter or early spring. And of course, I'm frugal, so it must have been on sale. <laughs> uh, I never shop there unless they have a 40 or 50% off sale going on. Okay, so I'm gonna leave this, and I will come back to it later to finish it off. Um, and so I have this one all ready to go. It's not a perfect job, but it doesn't matter. Why did I paint it pink? I painted it pink to go with a pink chenille. Okay, I made a pattern, which I will measure in just a second. And then I laid two pieces of my chenille on top of it. Made sure that mine had li these little tassels. Let's scoot you back a little bit. I didn't want. I wanted to make sure that I didn't cut my tassels off. So, let me just cut this out. At the bottom on one side, I'm just folding it over, so there's no cut. the very bottom. I'll show you what I mean in just a second. We're going to use this one piece to make another tree. Okay, so this is my pattern. This is just good old computer printer paper. And right here, I didn't cut all the way through. Can you see that? Right where this band is. So if you have a chenille that has something like that and you don't want to cut all the way through it, you don't need to. Okay. So I'm going to start at the top and I'm just gluing the two pieces together. We'll leave the bottom open. You can sew this project as well. But I, I pretty much always use hot glue, and here's why, because people ask me this all the time. Why do I always use hot glue? I use hot glue because I want absolutely everyone to be able to do the projects that I do here. And I know that not everyone has a sewing machine, and I know that not everyone knows how to sew, but most people do know how to use a hot glue device, and most people's seem to have one so but you could uh, absolutely set, sew this with a sewing machine or hand stitch it if you wanted that would be better probably but this works just fine so let me get this where did my glue stick go I know I had one here okay well let me grab a couple more it's hiding my desk is messy so anyways I did not say any of my normal stuff uh, how's everyone doing say hi when you hop on so I know you're here feel free to sprinkle at the very end I will get you my supply list um, there's nothing complicated or expensive about this project and it's so different and so cute I think you're gonna really like it Okay, so I want to glue this little bit here in the corner where I didn't cut my tree. Okay? And then I'm going to use this piece to create one more tree. And so I'm just going to see if it's straight-ish and pin it pitting the front and the back together. I think it's fun to do two trees that have the fringe and one tree that does not. Um, I'm just doing a total of three trees for this project and you'll see why in just a second. But you can obviously do all three different sizes if you would like. I did cut my dowels a little different. So it makes one of them look slightly smaller and I'll show you that in a minute. I tell you what, this pink 
bedspread, this pink sh popcorn Chanel bedspread. It's so much easier to cut through than that white one. That white one is hard. Oh my goodness. And after you have everything glued, you can trim the edges up uh, to make them look neat. So don't, don't worry about that right now. This craft is going to go fast, so stay with me. You could use, um, you could use canvas duck. You could do this project with felt. You could do this project with a printed fabric. Uh, you could do this project with some flannel from like an old shirt. There are a ton of ways that you could interpret this project into your color and your styles. Okay, let's glue this one together first. It won't take more than a couple of seconds. This is the perfect example of me getting super excited about a craft project. I just could, today, if you're watching live, I could not wait any longer to come live and show you. I was so excited about this. And I don't know if it's the, the pink factor or the chenille factor. Not sure. Or both. Let me see how messy my glue line is. It does not matter. Whoops. Okay, well, we're definitely going to have to trim this side. Because, look, I did not do a good job at all. Let me just do that real quick here. Is a messy cutting job, Heidi. Okay, so we have another tree. This is, we have these two. And then I showed you, or maybe I didn't show you yet. This is the white one that I did exactly the same as the pink one to speed things up so you don't have to sit and wait forever. So let me just glue my front to my back. On chenille, if you look closely, you will see that there is a front and a back. So if that's important to you, then just, especially where the fringe was, you can tell by the tape. Did I get it the right way? Yes, I think I did. <laughs> this chenille is, um, it's like a candle wicking. So it's really pretty. And when I saw this at Goodwill last spring, um, I was like, oh my gosh, I grabbed it before I even looked at the price, because I've been looking for chenille for at least two years, and then I stumbled on it. And same with the pink chenille. Like, what am I gonna do with pink chenille? I don't know. <laughs> but chenille can be hard to come by. You can get a more modern version of it at fabric stores, and it's what they use to make baby blankets and stuff. Um, so the little dots, are not as pronounced as they are here. Boy. That is messy. Okay, so then the next thing is to stuff these. And I am using Crafter's Choice 
fiber fill, which is ideal for doll making. And the reason why it's ideal for doll making is because it's kind of stiff, which is what I like. Okay, and if you've ever worked with a pastry bag, I'm gonna kind of do the same thing, turning it wrong side out so I can get some of this fiber fill up to the very point of my Christmas tree. Which is kind of hard to do. And then I like to tear it apart a little bit before I put it in. Pink for Valentine's Day. Oh my goodness. Yes, we will do a ton of pink crafts using this chenille for Valentine's Day. All kinds of heart stuff. And as always, you can fill this as full or not according to your preferences. I'm just gonna go with that. Now I need to make a little hole, I'm just gonna use my finger, to be able to thread my dowel in. I started out with some fat dowels um, and then I wasn't able to get them through anything to stand them up. So these are wooden dowel rods with, um, let's see, 12 inches long, um, it doesn't say what the diameter is. I'm just going to cut that off. They're skinny. All right, and I'm going to try to kind of poke this through the hole that I just created with my finger. And I'll add a little bit more fiber fill. And we'll glue the bottom together. So stay with me. We're going to do the next two. And I'm going to put a little pink embellishment on the top of the white one. And then we'll attach them. And it's going to be adorable. And completely unique. So again, if you're not a pink person, that's okay. If you don't have chenille, that's okay too. You can use... Okay, I need another glue stick. You can use just about any kind of fabric or canvas duck. You could even use quilt batting. I think that would be pretty. But be careful when you use hot glue with quilt batting because quilt batting gets very hot when you use hot glue. I'm using a low temperature hot gluing device as always. I've had way too many crafting hot glue burns and I'm just not willing to even risk it anymore because those hurt and they hurt for a while. This polyfill gets hot also, so just be careful. fiber fill and glue that's poking out the bottom. Okay, that's good enough for now. I'm going to come back probably and shorten this. All right, let's do this one. And we'll speed it up. We'll stuff this one and then we'll go to the ones that I have already stuffed so that we can move along with our project. Um, I'm always uh, aware that y'all have lives and you don't want to watch the boring stuff. So I try to do as much of that boring kind of stuff ahead of time so you don't have to sit here while I'm doing that. And I'm making two of this project with the idea, don't hold me to this, 
with the idea that I may include these in one of my next blessing boxes if I can part with them. Uh, we'll see. Anyways, I'm making two. One I will finish off camera. Okay, so it's pretty much stuffed and I'm gonna poke a hole with my finger. And put the dowel in. Okay, and I will finish these off camera, but I do wanna let you know that, um, well, let's, let me show you how you do the base for one and then how you can adjust the size and then we'll move on to the ones that I have ready. Uh, okay, so this is going to be too long. I want this to be the shortest one. So I'm just taking these little jewelry clippers. Um, use what you have. And if you just pinch your wood, these wood dowels, then you can basically break it off. All right, and then there's a lot of things that we could mount this to. And I brought out some examples, which it kind of depends on how big the dowel is. This is a um, little tiny uh, sp thread spool that I purchased on Amazon. Um, I got three different sizes. This is a genuine thread spool that has, it's a vintage one that has no thread on it. This, these were pieces of different packages. Um, Wood Pile is the brand from Hobby Lobby. This was a little uh, flower pot, a wooden flower pot from Dollar Tree. Oh, when I need to do this, let me tell you this first. Let's measure it. Completely forgot. Okay, it's nine inches from top to bottom. And then basically, at the bottom. It's going to be slightly bigger than this. The bottom is six and a fourth. There's nothing magic about this size. It's just what I ended up with. Okay, so I think I want this one to be shorter. And I was thinking, how would that look? That looks kind of funny. Um, what if we did this? That looks good. So, first thing is to glue. And these thread spools that I'm working on are, um, they're just little wood ones. They're nothing valuable. So don't worry, I'm not ruining a wood thread spool that's valuable. Okay, so I just glued that teeny little wagon wheel or whatever it is onto a thread spool. And then I'm going to put some glue inside of the hole and poke my tree in. And I'm going to have lots of glue string cleaning up and to do when I'm finished. Okay, so I did this basic idea with all the trees that I'm about to show you. Let me find some space and I'll show them to you. And they are, oh my gosh, they are so cute. Okay, this one I used a wood bead that had a pretty large hole and one of those wagon wheel things. This one I did very similar to what I just did which is a thread spool with one of those teeny wagon wheels on it. And then this one, I did two of those little wood uh, wheel things. All right, and we're gonna be attaching it to this. 
and then I'm going to do a star that will coordinate and tie the whole thing together for this white tree. It's not a star, it's a snowflake, but that's what I have. Okay, so I'm looking at it from my side, and I want the tallest tree to be in the back. I need to glue these so that they don't keep flipping around. So let me do that real quick. to kind of twirl and I don't want to glue any of my cute little fringe where I wouldn't want it so be careful here this is going to be so cute and you guys I want to see what you do with this idea because I know that the possibilities for this project are endless on this little tree here I used a piece of this pink and white gingham along the bottom. Can you see that? Okay, so I want the tallest one towards the back. So, let's just get brave and stick it on. off some of the excess hot glue that's kind of poking out. It's not adorable yet, but it's about to become adorable. Let's stick this one on basically right there. Quite messy. fingernail to scrape off the glue that's poking out. That's one of the benefits of using this low temperature. It cools quickly. And I opted to leave my dowels natural. Okay, and then I'm going to put the littlest one Let me just get rid of this knot, this funky knot here. Okay, so that is what that looks like. And now I'm going to put my little one in the very front. If you like the fringy ones best, you can make a little one that's shorter using the fringy stuff rather than this plainer one that has um, the ribbon on the bottom of it. Isn't that cute? Okay, next step. Next step is I'm just using some parchment paper to reduce the amount of mess that I have going on here. And I'm going to cut out, I could do two stars. Let's see if I can paint those. These are Dollar Tree, Dollar Tree Plus kind of thing. These are good to have. So I'm going to take them out of the package, and they're going to have this little stick em dot on the back, which I'm going to stick to my parchment paper because it will help it hold still. And then if I want, I can remove it later. Okay, and I'm going to get a little brush. We're using the same ballet slipper. Waverly Paint. Gosh, there's lots of people on. Thank you guys for joining me. Oh my goodness, I have missed crafting. Wow, I really missed it. 
Okay, I do want to tell you that if you decide to do this style, that you want to not use too much paint on your brush all at once. Because what happens, this one's going to need a lot, what happens when you use too much paint on the, that snowflake is that it, um, it covers up all the detail and it ends up looking like this versus this. Maybe I'm just being fussy, but um, yeah. These stars, though, are going to take a lot of paint. And I'm only doing a, a Christmas tree topper for one of these trees. It's going to be the white one. Oops. Okay, Heidi, you're getting out of control. Okay. So, these are... these. Because these were glittery, they probably will take an hour or so to dry. So I'll come back to those. Okay, let's look at these snowflakes. This one, I pulled that little back sticky dot off, and I'm going to do the same thing for the other one, this little dot. And I wanted these to be pretty simple because... We've got a lot going on here with all this chenille and fringe. I was kind of tempted to do a little glitter as well, but then I was like, okay, rein it in, Heidi. Cute set of trees, Rebecca Paxton says. Thank you. I'll just lay it down for a minute. And I really just want to glue it onto the front of my tree. And then I'm going to put one on the back just so that if you're looking at it from the back, it looks kind of nice, like a sandwich almost. Although you certainly could stop right there. And maybe I should. Let me see what this would look like. Now let's do the back too. So I pulled the little dots off of both of them, and now I'm going to do my best to get these kind of lined up and smooch it down and oh my gosh, glue strings. What do you think? Wouldn't this be adorable for a little girl's room? Heck, it would be adorable, doesn't go with any of my colors, but it would be adorable for my room. It would be adorable in the powder room. It could be adorable anywhere. And like I said at the start of this video, you can do this kind of a project with just about any, any kind of fabric that you like. And if you can't find these big wood slices, you could glue it to any other kind of wood. Um, it does kind of need a solid base, but let me show you close up. Here's the bottoms. I opted to leave those natural to sort of coordinate with the wood here. I painted the inside of my wood pink, which it would have been fine not to. Let me show you what that looks like. I just was really going for it. Looked like this. I'm just starting this one. And then I made these three trees. I adjusted the length of my dowels. And also this very front one doesn't have fringe and I made it a little bit shorter. But let me clear up my desk so that we can get a screenshot. And, oh boy, I've got a mess to clean up here. I will get good pictures though. What not it cute? I've seen with the chenille, I've seen all kinds of things done. I have seen mittens and you can use mittens in your decor or mittens on your Christmas tree, whatever size you want. I have seen snowmen 
with chenille. I have seen adorable stockings where they use this fringy stuff around toward the top, sort of the top area. Um, I have seen Christmas tree skirts. There are so many things that you can do and what gives it so much interest is just the texture. So you don't have to go crazy with the embellishments. I am, I'm not sure if I'll be able to part with this. <laughs> I might only be able to part with one. They're hot glued, yes. You could use E6000 if you prefer or whatever your favorite type of glue is or uh, well, I wouldn't use the E6000 on the fabric, but, but you could use it to glue the bases. Um, the other thing is, if you sew, you can absolutely sew these. And if you want them to be more um, polished looking, you can sew them wrong side out and then turn them right side out so that they don't have these edges. But I love the edges. I think the edges give it some charm. So what do you guys think? I'm seeing lots of love it. Do with this. My Facebook algorithms are sort of sleepy. <laughs> They're more than sleepy. After being gone uh, to Idaho. Um, so you can help me wake them up by doing a this or a this or sprinkling or saying something to me in the comments. And let me know if you want my complete supply list and I'll include everything. There's no, no super expensive or complicated ingredients here. And you can adapt to whatever, whatever you have on hand, you know, to make the bases. Um, go to Dollar Tree. Hobby Lobby is also a great place to get some of those wood pieces. And then your, your fabric can be an old flannel shirt, or Christmas fabric, or canvas duck, or cotton batting. Let me show you what that is, because I am tempted to do some projects with cotton batting. This is the quilt batting. And you can see it has some really nice uh, texture to it, and it has little speckles. And this stuff is great to make stuffies with, too. But absolutely whatever you want. So darling for a little girl's room, but what about a big girl? I went upstairs and changed my shirt to something pink just so I could do the whole pink thing. Okay, well, thank you guys for joining me. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if you want my supply list. And um, I hope to see you tomorrow and the rest of the days this week for some more craft projects that are going to be quick and easy. They're almost always going to be affordable. I like to do things that are unique, like making Christmas trees out of old uh, bedspreads. And doing pink Christmas trees, that's kind of unusual. Um, they're going to be quick to do because I have a short attention span. My sister loved her jacket. Catherine just asked me. She said, how did my sister love her jacket? She loved it. I, made, I did crosses in white ink with the cross, all over cross pattern stencil on the back of her jean jacket and took it to her. Um, and then they're going to almost always involve either faith, family, or flowers, or Christmas trees, or bunnies if it's Easter, <laughs> or pumpkins. But... Um, Everything that is safe and family friendly, no foul, anything, no curse words, nothing crazy. Okie dokie. <sighs> Catherine says, I just knew she would. She knew that my sister would love that jacket. It turned out so cute. Okie dokie. I'll see you guys later. Have a fabulous rest of your day.